Sean is going to join me today uh, because he hasn't been to Back in Black yet, and we got to make that happen at some point. But unfortunately, he's waiting for his desk to arrive. He ordered a new, new desk and has no idea when it's going to show up, so he's got to stay home to take delivery. Nobody ever talks about the cost of shipping and delivery in time. Not just that it takes time to get to you, but that when it finally does arrive, I don't know. If, I think this is a global phenomenon, right? Like they're just like, eh, it'll show up on this day, maybe sometime during that day. Hope you can be there. And that's kind of what's happening. And because it's a heavy thing, uh, it's kind of important that he's there to receive it. So because he can't join us and uh, yeah, we'll wait to go back to back in black with him. That's quite the way of saying that. I got two questions on my mind today. One is just how are markets going? I rode my bike past a market yesterday and I'm really curious to see like both how many people are actually in the outdoor markets here in Paris, but also if they're, you know, respecting the social distancing and trying to be safe. And then the other one is a Palais Rombeau is open. It's a coffee shop that I love over in the 11th, not far from Bastille. And since today the Bastille market is open, it seems like that's a good one two combo. So I think we're gonna go check out the Bastille market and see if Palais Rombeau is open. Not necessarily in that order. And for those of you that have been asking about it and asking about Jeanne and her mom, you're about to find out whether or not they're open. I assume just for takeaway coffee, if anything, and uh, hopefully cookies. I'd love to get a cookie from them. Oh, this plan just got even better. But first I gotta, I gotta write a script for one of our last upcoming podcasts. And uh, so I need to make sure to do that because we're recording that tomorrow. So I'm gonna do that and then we'll hit the road. Oh yeah, and I just did the random number generator. Today's random patron producer is Carmen L. Carmen, thank you very much for making this possible today and for uh, joining me in spirit for this cup of coffee. Thanks, Carmen, and to all of my patrons. Anyways, let's jump on the road. You can see why... Uh, I do, working here in the morning during the summer doesn't work out very well. Anyways, I finished this. I was just gonna immediately cut out and leave, but I wanted to highlight the fact that, yeah, sun in the face. It's good, it's nice. That's why I like to leave in the morning and work somewhere else. Let's go. Well, this looks great already. They have it fenced off and they've got an entrance here. From what I can see, you have an entrance and an exit and they're sanitizing everyone's hands as they walk in. And I imagine that they require you have a mask, but we'll find out here in a second. Bonjour, monsieur. Je vais une petite reportage sur les marchés aujourd'hui. Et j'ai voulu vous demander pour les règles, est-ce qu'il faut les masques? I don't know how good my audio was there, but basically he was saying that they're just here to encourage people to give them hand sanitizer if they want it. They do shut it down if there are too many people in here at any given time, and they ask that people respect space, but the masks aren't required. They're just highly recommended, and uh, yeah, they recommend you stay a meter apart, and you'll see a lot of like saran wrap put up as sneeze guards. I think that might be my favorite part.
Well, that was a really interesting experience. I guess I can take this off now that I'm outside, get a little bit of the sweat out of my mustache. I don't know how much longer this mustache is gonna last. Let me know what you think, but ooh. A couple of the differences that I noticed, that some of them are obvious, some of them are subtle. One of the obvious ones is the cellophane wrapped sneeze guards everywhere. Those are hilarious. They look wildly ineffective and, you know, at least they're there. It's better than nothing. Most everybody was wearing masks and I felt like most everybody was respecting the distance request, at least a meter of distance. Some were even better uh, in front of one of the butchers. It looked like people were really doing a good job. One of the subtle differences is that normally you can just enter in from the street. So between the trucks, all the trucks are backed up to make their delivery at the beginning. And so this entire street gets wrecked. If you're riding a bike, it's terrible on market days because you can't use the bike lanes. But normally you could sneak between the trucks, but not only do they have red tape on the outside of the trucks to keep you from trying to go in, but if you do, there's a metal barrier or barricade between each of those entrances maybe running the entire length of it actually they might have surrounded the entire space with these barricades and that's a really big difference like it reduces the amount of through traffic that comes through as people sneak in and out and everything felt really calm and orderly everybody felt nice i got stopped a couple times by different people who noticed my little camera and were asking questions about it there was one guy who was running a leather shop that was really curious and asked me what, where he could find one just like it and i kind of showed him how it worked and whatever else just for a minute because it was kind of nice there's another guy who was giving me a hard time and it's a classic tourist thing that they call out to somebody taking photos and say hey hey you, you, you need to pay me like a euro or whatever and i actually took him up on it because he seemed really funny and because then he has to let me film for a minute and so then you get a couple of really good shots and he was the character so you know if you feel like spending a euro to take some photos there's nothing wrong with it but otherwise i just ask people for permission like the flower vendors and people like that stop slow down for a second and say, hey, does it bother you? Est-ce que ça vous dérange si je prends des, des images, des photos, de, de la vidéo? You know, and usually people say yes, and if they don't, that's fine, you just move on. So that's a little tip for filming in markets, I guess. You shouldn't pay anything, don't ever pay anybody. They can't make you pay anything, but, you know, if you feel like easing in and maybe making a ridiculous friend for a euro, it works. And the other nice thing about filming here that's different is since everyone's wearing masks, people don't really care if you film as much. I feel like the attitude was a little bit different with that. People in France still aren't huge on being filmed, but um, I don't know, it just kind of feels like, hey, everybody's been anonymized by these masks. It works out really well. Anyways, that was a little bit of the Marché de Bastille. This is the market in Bastille uh, that runs up above the canal. The canal is actually underneath us right now. And it was a nice little experience. I'm really glad that I came out and checked this out. It feels like everything's running at full capacity. So if you want to go to the markets and you're happy to do some outdoor shopping, not a bad spot to do it. I'm going to go over now. I'm going to grab my bike. You got to walk all the way back down to find my bike. I'm tempted though, because we're already like halfway to Palais Rombo. I could walk there, but why walk when you can ride? I mean, really. Never mind. They're like, it's literally just two blocks away. I'm gonna walk to Palais Rombo and then we'll walk back to the bike after that. They're not open. Looking for any announcements as to what their hours actually are, but I don't know. I might have to send them a note to ask because it looks like they're very closed and their poor little plants need some water real bad. Well, that stinks. These guys are a great stop in town if you're ever here. I've made a lot of videos of them before. They were in the game back in the day and uh, they're lovely. So if you want to grab a good spot, it's a really chill location. It's not in a touristy area, so it's probably for those of you that are here for your second or third trip, but really chill. Nice spot to sit, have brunch, good coffee, and just like relax in a room full of books. I love these guys. Anyways, I'll have to send them a note to see when they're opening back up. Maybe they aren't gonna do any takeaway stuff. I don't know. It's the hard thing right now is no idea how people are gonna be changing their businesses up to survive this. So I'll reach out and ask. But in the meantime, I'm gonna go back by the Peloton really quick because I've been told there's something there for me. And of course, it's always nice to check in with those guys. I just gotta walk back all the way around to get my bike now. Also, thanks to Vitamin Well for the hydration on the ride today. I just threw one of these upgrades in my bag. They're really tasty. And these this ones have B12 in them, so. Okay, 
so I uh, I just had to it's a subject lost. I had to stop for a second because I stopped to pull out my camera and I was gonna do it right as the bus like I was gonna do a nice little weaving through traffic against the bus and everything else and I stopped right in front of the bus and the bus driver started to pull over. He's like, no, no, you're fine. And he's like, oh, I thought you couldn't get by. I was gonna move. Over. It was like the nicest interaction I've ever had with a bus driver in Paris. Not everybody's gonna be the nicest, sweetest people in the world, but I just hope that this nice sweetness continues. Uh, among the rest of us right now. So I don't know, it's just there's some good moments happening around the city. Anyways, uh, yeah, Peloton. And here's the older version of the bike that I wanted sitting here in front of, this is, this is suspicious. Hola. Hey. Hi. How are you? You guys in charge of the shop today? Oh, you Oh. But Tanya said she left something for me, a, a bag. Spicy stuff, I think. Ooh, spicy stuff. I mean, it must be spicy stuff, right? That'd be great. It must be spicy stuff, that's true. Aw, that's nice of her. Okay, we'll open this on. Uh, Tanya and I both love spicy things, and I've been trying to keep her well fed with Cheetos lately because my store is like the only store in Paris that has Cheetos, at least the only ones that I've found so far. And she was just calling, so let me call her back. We'll call Tanya here so we can hopefully hear her. Can you hear me, Tanya? Yeah. Hey, how you doing? Can you hear me? Yeah, I just put yeah. you. I just put you on speaker. You I'm literally standing. I'm I'm opening it on camera. Oh, no, and you're on speaker, and I can see you in your apartment. What? Ooh, peppers. Oh, <laughs> there's serrano or the long skins, and jalapeno are the other. I was gonna say these the look like jalapenos. Actually, they're spicy. That's so exciting. Did you find them? I found them. I thought the peppers uh, were the first yeah. thing. And then I don't want to get run over by the car. And then there's a jar. I'm ho this feels like salsa. It is. I think that's possibly a jar <gasps> you brought me. Either salsa it or is a jar that, that I gave you. That is, it is fresh salsa. Did you make this? And I did. Now it's not as hot as I would have liked it. I added a bunch of serranos. Um, so it might get a little hotter. I was going to say but, not very hot for you is um, probably plenty hot for me. Yeah, but I'm going to make green salsa tonight because I also got tomatillas, something I've searched for here and cannot find. So you may see another jar, I, depending on how that turns out. I will keep, anyway. I will be very excited to see another jar. Thank you so, so much. Okay. So yeah, so anyway, for those of us that love the heat. Yeah. I appreciate yeah, it so much. Well, that was so nice of her. Thank you, Tanya, if you ever see this. I cannot wait to eat fresh salsa. I have to eat it within three days or it might go bad and I'm not complaining. That's a, that's a timetable I can deal with. Also, it's just kind of crazy. So I was talking about the bike that I want to get. This is the old version of it. Not old, but the last version, the S2. I want the S3. I'm really excited. I'm really tempted to get one. I have a friend who said he's going to maybe try and help me work out a deal, but I have a feeling I'm just going to have to pony up at some point. But anyways, the electric version of the Svan Move. It's what I, uh, it's what I bicycling dream about. Somebody parked the, uh, my old dream bike here huh. in front of the cafe. Too shabby. Tanya, this salsa is changing my life right now. I have not had fresh salsa in forever. Thank you.